Now we look at chapter 15, which is oscillatory motion or vibratory motion. <coughs> now in here, we have already seen uh, there are three kinds of motion. So we have the translatory motion, translation, where an object goes from one place to another. And then we have rotation, where an object spins about an axis or it could go around something else. So that's a rotational motion, translation, rotation, and the third kind is vibration in which an object goes back and forth. Could be in a straight line, could be uh, maybe not in a straight line, but it just keeps going back and forth. So we look at vibration and a very special kind of vibration or a special kind of vibratory motion, which is called simple harmonic motion. And we'll look at, as we, as we come along, we will see what that means. Now, the first thing to see here is what we call Hooke's law and that deals with uh, the forces on a spring. So if we have a spring attached rigidly to a support and it's on a horizontal surface and it's completely frictionless, uh, motion is frictionless, and in this condition, the spring is in equilibrium, there's no stretch or no compression in the spring, and the center of the mass is at, at this mass of mass M attached to the spring is at x equal to zero. Now we apply a force to the right and we apply a force F1 and well, and we stop. So we're applying a force F1 and we're not pulling it any further. The spring will be applying a force <coughs> negative F1 which is opposite to F1 and the object, the mass M is in equilibrium. So the force with which we are pulling is exactly equal to the force with which the spring is pulling it backwards. So the two are equal and opposite. Now, if we double this force or increase this force and make it F2, so as we increase this force, the spring will stretch more and reach some new position X2. And if it's held over here, that means that this force is balanced exactly by this force due to the spring. So in equilibrium, the two are equal. While it's moving outwards, this would have been bigger. So now what we find is that if F2 is equal to two of F1, so if you double this force, then X2 becomes double of X1. So this force, and the displacement from x equal to zero, or the stretch, they are both proportional. The force and the stretch are proportional. So F is proportional to x, where F is the applied force and x is the displacement. Now, because in, in, in equilibrium, the two are equal, we can say that Fs is also proportional to the displacement and we have a proportionality constant, so we can write it as equal, and that constant is written as a k. Now this k is the stiffness of the spring, so the spring is very stiff or made of strong material, then for a certain pull or stretch, this force will be much larger, well this would also be larger, so f depends on the stiffness of the spring. So a spring like what we have in this pen where we can push it easily okay and the pin, pen comes out easily so the k has a small value the shock absorbers of a car are holding up the whole car so the k is much bigger now we also see that when x is positive the pull is to the left and if we had pushed it in so we applied a force to the left the spring will push to the right now, when x is negative, fs is positive. When x is positive, fs is negative. negative. And so we have a minus sign over here. This equation is called Hooke's law. And this is the force applied by the spring, also called the restoring force. 
which tries to restore the spring back to its original position and again here is trying to bring it back to its original position and this is the spring constant and the units would be newtons per meter because it's a force divided by displacement and the x would be the displacement from the equilibrium position or the mean position and that means when the spring is has no force on it so the distance is measured from here the original length of the spring does not come into this equation it's only how much it has stretched or moved away from the mean position so this is Hooke's law <laughs>